Dominguez, March 25th, 2020, 2K20, baby. Okay, so today's warm up is going to be three questions. You're gonna go ahead and write them down, take a picture of them, email them to me in your Google Classroom. That is, number one, what are three criticisms of my YouTube channel? Be honest. Number two, when did you do my homework or any of the work? Be honest. I know some of you are emailing me at 2 or 3 in the morning. That's fine. As long as it's turned in on time. And number three, where should I host my class from next? Now, I know I am hosting from my backyard. I could host from the front yard. I could host from inside my truck. I could host from my motorcycle. I don't know. I could host from my garage. You know, there's a possum that lives in there, so I probably want to stay away. I was thinking of hosting from the Alamo. Unfortunately, the Alamo's closed. I thought about the missions, they're closed. But the Riverwalk and the Pearl are not. So I think I might. I think I shall. Well, I'll see what you have to say. Um, I know we are on uh, lockdown, so... <laughs> It really limits where I can and cannot host, but I'm, I'm going to try anyway. Okay, so uh, go ahead and do your warm-up. I have today's album of the week is Youth of the Day. We're not in this alone. Now, the first line from this, first, from this album, which is our last album, is We're Back. And I think that's really cool because it's like, it's like telling the world we're back, me and you, not, not you. You're not even paying attention. You, me and you, we're back, right? We're back in life, we're back in this world, and I think that's really cool. So I love that line, we're back. Also, today, I have some more things on my desk. I got my stapler. I've got this really cool pen that a uh, student council gave me, so shout out to them. It doesn't really fit my lifestyle, but you know, hey, whatever, it's a cool pen. And I have a student, Madeline Eliza Lambert, I don't want to say any names, who has been craving these cookies and she kept missing for, you know, boring reasons. I don't remember what. I think it was tennis or whatever. Like, And she couldn't get any Thin Mints from Girl Scouts. So I thought I'd decide to share with y'all today. Everyone's going to get a Thin Mint. You're welcome. It's funny because she's not here, like, physically to eat it. So. Well, that would be cool. No, that no, 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 no. Okay, go ahead and get started with your warm-up. Number one, um, what are your criticisms on my YouTube channel? Number two, where should I host my class from? And number three, oh, when did you do your homework? Word. What the? advertisements right um now that we're done with the warm up uh we're gonna move into our look out and our look out is it's not up i'm trying to figure a way to put it up um apparently last time a bunch of kids didn't see it so i'm, I'm glad when you're honest when you can find things when you can't when you say things are difficult or not that's why i want that as your warm up uh, so i'm gonna try and figure a way how to get the look out to you guys uh, next up, picture of the day. Another thing that the kids said that they couldn't see. It was in your Google Drive, just along with the lookout. Uh, I put it in your Google Classroom under picture of the day. I don't know exactly where you can look. I'm only looking from the teacher's point of view, not 
the students. So it should look the same. So when you see it, go ahead and click on it and then click on picture of the day. Those of you who can't see it, great. Those of you who can, figure it out. Uh, the picture of the day is a picture of Picadillo that my wife made for me. Uh, I wanted some Picadillo and I, I was actually at the H-E-B Kitty Hawk uh, when I went to get this one. That's a, it's kind of a small H-E-B. It's nice, but it's a little small, a little too small. I went and I bought some stuff. They didn't have toilet paper. You know what I'm talking about. And I went to go look for some stuff. They didn't really have many. And then I thought, oh, man, I really want some picadillo. If you don't know what picadillo is, it's just meat and potatoes, ground beef, potatoes, Mexican seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and a little cumin. And uh, this time I put calabacita or a little squash uh, in it. Uh, it. It was nice. It was good. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll add carrots, just put little cute ones. I don't like it. Sometimes people add too much carrots and it overpowers it. So I know my wife made some fresh corn tortillas. So very good, good, very good meal. Very delicious. Great. Okay. Tell me about yourself. Essay is due Friday. This is going to be a scholarship essay. This is going to be an essay that you're going to be applying for scholarships. Those of you who already have, perfect. You're doing everything you should. Awesome. Those of you who have not, it's not too late. School's still in session, but, you know, time's ticking down. That's for seniors. For juniors, it's never too early to start applying for scholarships. In fact, they even had a bunch of scholarships and I took college field trips for juniors back in uh, October, November to schools because they wanted to talk to juniors. So juniors, it's still not too late, but you missed a few opportunities, don't miss it anymore. Sophomores, now's the time to have a scholarship ready, because next year when you start applying, boom, you got one, boom, you got one, boom, you got one. Freshmen, <laughs> the four years fly by real fast, real fast. Some of the seniors are like, yeah, they did. Okay, so this is gonna be a difficult essay. Not because it's gonna be long or lengthy or technical, because it's about you and you don't know how to write about you. You know how to talk about yourself, and you know how to talk about yourself when nobody asks. But you don't know how to talk about yourself when somebody does ask. It's difficult. So you're gonna say, it's hard. I don't know what to say. I don't know anything to write. I don't know about me. You're an idiot, stop. It's gonna be hard if you have nothing to say and you've done nothing. So all the accomplishments you've done, all the sports you've played, all the awards you've won, all the great straight A's you've earned, all of that now comes into play. Now you're gonna have to describe yourself in about 500 words or less. 500 words sounds like a lot, but it's really not. If you think about it, your warm up was, what are three criticisms of my YouTube channel? That was nine right there, that's almost 10. And that's just one question. Look how easy that was. You're gonna need to write an essay about yourself. 500 words, introduction, body, conclusion. Your introduction should not be, my name is Michael Dominguez. No, that's terrible. That's trash. That's terrible writing. If that's how you're writing, your English teacher should be ashamed. That is not good writing. That is bad. Nobody wants to read an essay that said, my name is Michael Dominguez. If you were sitting there taking the star and that was the first line, you would be bored. And I know you're already bored, but you would be really bored and already turn off and put your head down and say, I've got four more hours. That is not how you start a sentence. Or and that is not how you, well, it's not how you start a sentence. It's not how you start an essay about yourself. I sat on scholarship committees, so I know a thing or two about these. You need an interest, shut up! You need to interest them the first sentence because they're You need Yeah, go ahead there. There, sorry. So you need to interest them a me Give me a second. There you go, just take a good. So, 
You need to interest these people right away because when you interest them, they're going to keep reading. If they're not interested, they're probably not going to continue to read it and they're going to throw away your scholarship essay. And then you're not going to get the money. And this is free money, right? So go ahead and start get started. You're, you should write about three things about yourself. Now, I know you can't really see what I'm writing, so I'm going to go ahead and get closer so you can see what I'm writing. Three things. Oh, I guess I could bring the chair Hello. All right. You're not going to want to start off with your first your introduction. To me, that's a bad way of writing. When I used to teach writing, I would never tell the kids, start with the introduction. Because the, what's the problem? Exactly. You don't know what you're going to write about. So how are you supposed to introduce topics you don't know what you're going to write about? So what I do is I start with the body. And I start with three things I know I'm going to talk about. And then draft it out. So, for example, let's say here in sports. draw a big circle tell me three things about playing team sports well you know that teamwork is important why is teamwork important well if you don't play as a team you're gonna fail right it's not an individual sport it's a team sport if you don't pass the ball right or if you never get the ball passed if you don't do your job as a team your team works as one unit a cohesive unit if everyone's doing their own thing it's not gonna work and trust me my friend used to teach my friend Danny he used to teach little kids basketball I used to watch them and they all the kids thought they were the greatest just like you did in middle school and you and your freshman year you thought you were the best no one could touch you no y'all were probably terrible the first in elementary also everyone's double dribbling all over the place people aren't even people aren't even just carrying the ball right there's so many fouls it was terrible to watch but you know, you, you practice and you got better, right? If, can you imagine if y'all still played like that now, as if you did when you were in middle school or in elementary? Oh, God. And the, and the thing is, those middle school kids think they're amazing. It's like, hmm, no. So, teamwork. You know why it's important to play as a team, right? So then let's look at another one. Um, time management. I'm going to put time, man time MGT. Time management. Now we know that time management is difficult because when you're an athlete, you're there at the gym or you're there at games till eight, nine o'clock at night. You get home about 10 or 11, right? And then if you're playing football, you know, you don't get home till 12 or if you're out of out of the city, sometimes one, two, even three in the morning, right? Same thing if, if you're in any of these uh, sports teams, you'll know that Time management is tricky because if I give you homework today and you have a game today and you leave at 2 o'clock and you don't get back till 11 o'clock at night, from 2 to 11 you're with your team and you still have homework that's due tomorrow, so when are you going to get that done if school starts at 8, 8.30 in the morning? you got to stay up late, right? So you need, to have, you need to better know how to manage your time. Okay, and the third thing, so we have teamwork, time management, and then you'll have, I'm going to put... last oh fast decisions fast decisions those of you who play tennis those of you who play soccer those of you who play these sports that are non-stop and that are uh, action-packed you know what it's like to make a fast minute decision and sometimes one of those just one just one of those fast minute decisions can really alter your game if you take a step too much, if you don't take a step far enough, if you lunge when you're not supposed to, if you don't lunge, you know, essentially one decision can make or break a game. And so you have to constantly be critically thinking of your next steps, along with your actual physical steps, but things that you gotta do later, right? The next, the future, right? In the five, 10 second future. And you know that it's important because you can practice and practice and practice with the same person every day and be great and you know beat everyone on your team and then you play someone from another team and you're like Jesus Christ I was not ready for that so it is very important to know how to make those critical decisions or fast-minute decisions so right there sports teamwork time management fast decisions let's look at let's say you have a job right let's say you work at Jamba Juice let's say you work at um, I don't know Chuck E. Cheese or 
uh, whatever that snow cone place is that doesn't have dragon's blood or tiger's blood. I don't want to name any places, but if you don't have both and you don't you don't put uh, Kool Aid on your raspa, I don't even think you're a real raspa place. But let's just say you have a job, right? And so your job is I'm gonna put work, and most of you probably work. Three things about work. Well, one is I'm gonna put leadership. 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 I don't know if you can actually see these, but whatever. Leadership. What are leadership skills that you have or that your manager has that you would like to acquire? Or maybe you have a terrible manager and you want to be better than your manager. How are three things, what are three leadership qualities you wish that they had? All right? And so you can list one, two, and three, three things. So you know communication is going to be big. If you don't know how to communicate with others, things aren't going to get done. Right? Um, time management would also be another one. Any kind of decisions that you want to make about leadership. Oh, I'm sorry. And so when you get to teamwork, when you get to time management, and when you get to fast management decisions, you're going to put three things. Right? Same thing for leadership here and then work. The next one you're going to want to put for work is customer service. Customer service. Look, I've worked every job you can imagine every job especially in a restaurant front house back house I've done it all and customer service is the worst it's one thing to get along with your co-worker who's you know a line cook with you and you're putting out dishes left and right and they make a mistake not a big deal but when the customers make mistakes oh god Jesus we all have stories of bad customers I know you have stories you not get out of the way you're asleep you have customer service stories oh just write about the one time someone was rude and Jesus Christ if you worked at Bill Miller's if you worked at Wendy's if you worked at Taco Bell if you worked anything with fast food you know bad customers right they're almost on a daily basis almost an hourly basis they come in with all their problems and take them out on you they'll ask you for a number 12 and you put in number 12 I didn't say that I said a number four and you're like Gee, that doesn't even sound like number 12 and then you're, they're like, oh, I want a chicken, a number four. And you're like, a number four is not even chicken. It's beef. What are you talking about? Right? Um, oh. So if you want, you can go ahead and write about a time that a customer was rude and you were able to handle it. Not the time you went off on the customer or that you think that's cool because you yelled at the customer. The time you handled it properly, right? Not poorly, properly. Rock early, not orly properly and you were able to go ahead and handle that and so that makes it much better right and maybe some of you have had multiple bad customers I don't know like every single day at work and the last thing you want to write about are what are your duties and responsibilities so I'm gonna write responsibilities and actually I'm just gonna write rest because responsibilities it's a long word I've got to write a bunch of eyes I never know how many to write we're done right so you're gonna write about what do you do at work what are your um, what are your tasks that you have to do? Clean up, right? If you're doing cleanup crew, we know that your restaurant closes at, let's say, at 9. But cleanup starts at 8 because you want people out of there as soon as possible because you want to get home. So we know that you're going to have to take out the trash, right? So that's going to be one. Let's say you got to wipe down all the material that you give to customers and that could be menus that could be silverware you could be wrapping silverware oh my god that is terrible that is terrible so folding the oh it's, it's stupid how we still have to do that right there should be a machine that does that so the silverware right there let's say you got to wipe down your tables and you got to sweep and mop and clean the restrooms and everyone knows that boys and girls restrooms are both terribly disgusting how dare y'all I don't know what y'all do in there boys girls everything in between it's gross right it's disgusting uh, I've I've had to clean boys restrooms and girls restrooms because they don't really care when you're in a restaurant they don't care you know what what you identify as and how you're gonna you you got restroom duty and it sucks it's terrible both toilets are disgusting there's things on all over the floors there's pee everywhere it's it's gross right so you're gonna want to take care of that so then let's just say restroom so you have trash right you have silverware or and you have restrooms if those aren't your duties you know you can include those some of you do extra duties some of you do less because you know the manager likes you whatever and then nobody likes you because of that and so right here you you listed two things sports work and then you listed 
three things underneath. Teamwork, time management, fast decisions, or leadership. Couldn't read it. I thought I was reading lemon. Uh, leadership, customer service, and then your duties. And then you have three things listed underneath. These little tiny lines are going to become your sentences. These sentences will become paragraphs, right? And that's how you're going to start writing your essay. You can do one about you. Uh, you don't have to do anything too personal. Let's say you were adopted or you come from foster care or you know you lost a mother or a father and it's too emotional for you and you don't want anyone to talk about it, don't write about it. Don't write anything that you're not comfortable with. Remember, these are strangers who are gonna read it. It is easier for people to talk to strangers about these issues, but for some people it's still just too close to the heart, right? So um, for mine, uh, my sister had breast cancer and she's a survivor. Turns out I messed up on that part. I was supposed to go to the surgery. I didn't, I didn't go to the surgery. I didn't know. I've apologized. It's my fault. But so for cancer survivor, I could write about what it was like to be, to have a sister who was going through cancer and all the emotional support I needed to give her, right? Or I didn't give her. So, you know, everyone could write a third one about a personal thing. Again, if it's too personal, don't write about it. Uh, if you know it's going to make you cry, just stop. Find something else to write about. And so those are three things I'm going to put that. So I'm going to put my sister. Three things you can write about. Sports, work, sister. If you want, you can write about what do you want to go to school for? What do you want to learn? What do you want to do when you're older? Right? I don't want to say when you're an adult because there's plenty of adults that we know that have not made their decisions. And they're 20 and 30 and they're still trying to figure it out. Nah, brah. Figure, you should have figured it out a while ago. About 20 years ago. So... Right now, go ahead, draw out a sketch, take a picture of this, email it to me. This is a grade. Your sketch is a grade. Then you're going to start writing out these into paragraphs and then you're gonna go ahead and get started. Again, right now, don't worry about the introduction. Don't worry about the conclusion because if you're having a hard time filling this web out, then it's gonna have a hard time filling out an introduction, explaining what you're gonna talk about when you don't have a body. So. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me. My phone number is on the Google Class, no, I'm sorry, not on the Google Classroom, on my teacher webpage. And then um, on the teacher webpage, you'll find your Google Classroom code. There's a lot of students who still have not signed up. Please go ahead and tell all your friends to start signing up for the classes. Go ahead and start signing up for the Google Classroom codes. They have work to do. And it's not just my class, all teachers. So go ahead and get connected with your teachers. I'm calling parents still. There's still numbers who aren't working, so it's difficult for me to go ahead and make contact with you, or people just don't answer. I'll leave a voicemail and you don't contact me back, and that makes it difficult. Uh, you can always email me, mdominguez at jetsonisd.org, M-D-O-M-I-N-G-U-E-Z at jetsonisd.org. It's in the title of the video, it's in the description. It's what I yell out loud, so you should notice but Dominguez. It's also my teacher webpage. If you don't know how to get to it, judsonisd.org, right? Click on schools, scroll down, Judson High School, meet the teacher, or meet teachers, or whatever it is, and then Michael Dominguez or Mr. Dominguez, and then there's all my information. Again, if you're gonna call me, call me anywhere between 12 and 5 p.m. Not 12 in the morning, 12 and 5 p.m. Uh, I am recording videos for my Mexican American studies from early in the morning and then I have personal finance which is your class which is what I'm teaching and then I'm recording that from about 10 to 11 and then after that I have a conference call with the history department from 11 to 11 30 11 45 yesterday was easy it was only like a 30 minute call but sometimes they'll be 30 sometimes they'll be a full hour so that's why I'm saying I'll be unavailable for you to physically talk to me until about 12 p.m. After that, feel free to call me until 5 p.m. I will get a hold of you. I'll get in touch with you. Email me whenever you want, even though some of you are emailing me at 3 in the morning. I don't get a notification about that, so that's perfect. Um, I'll email you when I when it becomes available and so you get a responsible time. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. That's the end of class. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day.